Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements drawing project, we'll be taking a photograph and turning it into this architecture style blue line drawing. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training, and you'll find the link for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. This blue line drawing here has been converted in Photoshop Elements from a photograph. So let's just start with that. I'm going to close this file down. Here's the original picture that I was working with right there. Now the first thing you'll notice on this is that the perspective is a bit off. This always happens when you're working with a building that's taller than you are. The top of the building is going to be squeezed in compared to the bottom of the building. So your lines are going to be pointing in towards some point up at the top. So you get this kind of a keystoning effect on the image. So the first thing we need to do is to fix that keystoning effect. Now I'll start that by just grabbing a guideline here from the left hand side and I'll pull this in until I find something to kind of line this up against. And I'll put it here right next to the window. Not right on the edge of that window frame right there. A little bit of window detail. But just next to it. Just kind of as a visual reference. I'll do the same thing over on the right hand side as well. Now I want to find things that are out towards the outer edge as opposed to in the middle someplace because we're caring about the outer edge. I might even move this over a bit and put it right between those two lines on the window in there just for a reference. That also allows me to kind of compare it up here with the edge of the building in the top window as well. So these are just reference points to work from. Now if you don't have your ruler showing, go up here to view and click on rulers right there. Later on we're going to be needing these rulers set in pixels. Might as well fix that right now. Just right click on the ruler and set that to pixels up there. That's what this is set at right now. You're just probably set at inches like that. So just right click and set it to pixels. Again we'll be coming back to that later on in the training. Now that we have this set up, we have a couple of guidelines on here, we can adjust the perspective. But before we do that, let's make a copy of our background layer up here. Just make a, a new copy just like that and then hide the background. I always like to do this just in case I mess things up. I can always go back to my original, which is saved right there in the file as the original background. So make our adjustments here on our background copy. Go up to Image and then Transform and then come down to Perspective. Now in here, there are a lot of settings down below. Just leave all those as is. What we care about are these control handles left and right corners. Now these work as a set. If you grab one and pull it, both of them move. As you can see there, they both move out. What you want to do is you want to pull these out until the straight lines in the image kind of match up with the guidelines they put in as reference. And that looks pretty good right here. So. The little window right there, that's lined up with that guideline. This edge of this window is now lined up with that guideline. So that side is straight. And the edge of the window here is lined up with that guideline. That's fine too. It just makes the image look better for a drawing if these lines are all vertical. So we'll take care of this as our first step. And choose OK. There we are. OK, so we've fixed the vertical on this. We can now get rid of those guides. They're no longer needed. Go up to View and just Clear Guides like that. And they're now gone. Okay, that was phase one or step one on this process is just to straighten things out. Now, let's convert this into a black and white image. I want to convert it to get the sky as white as possible on the conversion. So we'll go up to Enhance and come down to Convert to Black and White right there. And there's the dialog. And just go through these settings and look for the one that gives you the best contrast. You want real nice high contrast. And it looks like newspaper in this case is the best on this image. Now different images with different colors may require a different one of these options, one of these different styles. So make sure you click through each one and see what you get. And then choose the one with the best contrast based upon the colors in the picture. Now once that's done, notice how our sky now is pretty much white. That's perfect. It's a little bit of darkening up here. We'll take care of that later on if we need to. 
We'll see how that goes. That may not be necessary. But we can now come down to contrast. We can increase the contrast a little bit. It's going to pull that up. Makes the, the building a bit darker. I just pulled it up just a little bit here to make the building darker. You can also adjust your values from the intensity. And you can pull these back and forth and see what effect that has on the picture. What I really care about now is nice contrast range in the image and a nice clean white. What's most important is that we get a nice separation here between the background and the roof. Looks pretty good. Let's just try the green a little bit in here. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Doesn't really help that much. Maybe a little bit more to the right kind of loses that stuff in the top. So we fixed that problem here just by increasing the green a little bit. I think that's good. That'll save us some work in the future. And let's check the blues. I'll leave them about where they were. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so just a nice contrasty picture and hopefully, if you're lucky, a nice white sky. She's okay. There we are. There's our nice black and white image. Let's now make a copy of this layer. Just take a layer, drag it up here to the new layer button like that. And we'll invert this. You want one positive and one negative. The top one is negative. Go up to filter, come down to adjustments and invert right there. So you have a positive and a negative. We're now going to blend these two layers together and you get a basic white image. There may be some black spots, not important, but we want to blend these two together. So go up here to the blend modes and come down to color dodge, which is right there. And there it is. Basically a white image. Some of this grass stuff is in black. That's fine. That's not going to be affecting our work at all. So black and white becomes a white with the color dodge. Now we're going to make just a little shift on the top image up here so that everything becomes apparent again. What this does is it's going to be bringing out all the lines for us. We're going to make a slight shift up here and we'll then be seeing the difference in position on those and that difference is going to be showing up as lines. Now if you're doing this as a drawing you wanted to say convert a picture of a person into a line drawing so it has a pencil sketch effect. That is done very well here by using blur and the Gaussian blur right there with kind of a low setting on Gaussian blur. But that's not what I want here. I want real nice, crisp, clean, sharp lines this time. So let's come down to other and then come down to minimum right here. Now these two, the maximum and the minimum are very useful if you are adjusting layer masks to make your layer mask a little larger or a little smaller. But here we can use that effect of increasing or decreasing to give us our line drawing right there. That is the minimum and there's our line drawing. Now you can adjust the radius. Keep it relatively small. Here's a radius of 4. It's a little lighter in value. 3 is a little lighter still. And I kind of like 5 on this one. It just makes some of the dark lines a bit heavier. So there we go. Here's our setting of 5. And that gives us the line drawing. There it is. Notice how those black spots just kind of blended right in so they weren't a problem at all in this image. So there we go. There is the basic line drawing. Now we need to convert this line drawing over into a blue line and for that I want to combine these two layers onto a new layer. Now to do that it's a special keyboard shortcut and it's Control Shift Alt and the E key and what that does is it combines the visible layers up into a new layer right there. We can now hide those, we're done with those, and here's our new layer up here. Now that we have this, we can put a blue layer above this and then using our blend modes, blend the blue layer back into this, giving us that blue line effect. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll first start with a new layer. There it is. Let's get a blue color set in here. Just click on the foreground color and the blue that I'm using on this one in here is 0134B8. There it is, 0134B8. It's just kind of a full saturation blue, mid-range on the blues in here, about a third of the way down. We now have that as our foreground color. So now just grab the paint bucket and click any old place and it fills that layer with that specific blue color. Okay, now 
let's blend this into this layer down here. So we'll go up here to normal, this is our blend modes again, and come down to the screen blend mode, which is right here, right above that color dodge. And there you go, that blends that into our image. Now at this point, you may want to adjust the contrast of your image a little bit, make it look a little nicer. So come down here to our layer, layer one, this is our combined image layer. And let's put an adjustment layer right above this one. So layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, just click on that and choose OK. Here it is. So now we can kind of darken down our darks a little bit in here. You can see that. And we can adjust the midtone values right there. To the right will make it all darker, to the left makes it lighter. And the white, we can ignore that because we already have pure white in our image. So I'm going to set these. I'm going to actually type in a number here. I'll do 51 for the black. And then on the midtone values, I'm going to be doing a point 89 right there. It just kind of richens up those colors, makes the colors a bit stronger. Now the amount that you want here, you, you may need to change these values depending upon your picture and depending upon what you want, the effect that you want, just adjust these until you get about where it is that you like. This just happens to match the example I had for the beginning of this whole discussion. So there it is. So here it is without that, and here it is with. It just adds a bit of richness in there to the drawing, making it a bit easier to see. Okay, a little adjustment layer. All right, now we can come in and we can put a border around this in here. And for that border, notice what right now we're on this adjustment layer. That's fine. We're below the blue layer. Let's put a new layer above that. This new layer. There it is. We want the new layer above this and below the blue layer. Right there. Let's fill this layer with white. So let's just invert our colors here. There we go. And paint bucket and click. Fills it with white. Easy enough. Now here is where these pixel rulers come in for us. I'm going to zoom in a bit on this. There we are. And you can see up here we have 50 pixels right there. That's that line. And 50 over here. That's that line. I want to have guidelines that are 50 pixels out from each side. So let's just grab our guideline. I'll drag it down until I'm on that 50 pixel line on the left hand side. You can actually see it up there. In that little pop out. It doesn't have to be exact, but about 50. There's 49.5 good enough. Let's pull the left side in and set it right at that 50, 49.5. That's what it wants to do here. That's fine. So there's our top and our left. Let's just pull this over here to the right hand side. Now I can't see my 50 point over here. I could just use that little visible reference that we have in there. But if you don't have Photoshop Elements 15, you won't see that. So let's set this up for anybody to do this. Up here, upper left hand corner of these two rollers, little box right there, grab that box and pull that out. And you actually pull the, your zero point out and I'll place it right in the top corner. There we go. Here's my new zero point. Zero and zero. I can now pull this guide in and I can see my 50 mark right up there. And I'll put it at 50.5, that's pretty good. There we go. And the reason it's not hitting that exactly depends upon the size of the image and a few other factors, but as long as you're within you know, about half a uh, pixel, you should be just fine on that. So there's that left side. Let's now pull down to the bottom. And on the bottom, here's 1,000 and here's 950, so we have a 50 space right there. That's fine. So let's pull this guide down to that spot. And there it is. Let's set this back to fit screen. And to reset your rulers, just double click on that box upper left hand corner. And that puts them back the way they were. If you want them to go back to inches at this point, that's fine. Right click and just set them back to inches. We're now done with that bit of measurement. Okay, we have our guidelines in here. Now go up to view, come down to snap to, and make sure that guides is checked right there. And it is here. Then go over to the rectangular marquee tool and click on this cross point right there on the guides and drag down to the cross point down there. Now because the 
snap to is selected, it will snap right to those guidelines. So we have the intersection now selected on the white layer. Now just hit your delete key. And there it goes. And we can now unselect, let's do a little deselect. And we can hide those guides are no longer needed. So view, which is clear the guides out. So there's a border. Let's now add a thin line around that border. We're still on this one layer up here. It says layer three. I'm going to rename this layer border just to make it real easy what we're talking about. There's our border layer. Go up to layer, come down to layer style and style settings and stroke right there. Now the color on this should be black. That's fine because the blue layer up here is going to change the color here to that blue. So it should be black here. I'm going to make this two and you want this to be positioned outside. So you can just double check, make sure it's outside. There we go. Now when it's outside, it's to the, the outside of our white piece. We, this white piece right here, that's what's on that layer. So outside is here and also out here. We can't see that, of course, because it's outside the picture. So if this is set to outside, it's outside of that white border, which is visually, of course, inside the frame and choose OK. So size is 2, choose OK. And there we go. There's our nice little thin border on that. OK, last little bit. I'm going to zoom in up here on the roof. And you'll see it's maybe sharp, maybe not. Hard to say. But we're going to sharpen this up just a little bit just to make sure this has real nice, crisp, clean lines to it. Go down here to the combined layer. That's your black and white image right here. Go up to enhance and come down to adjust sharpness right there. Leave this at the default settings and let me just show you the preview. Here's without and there it is with. So if you look up in here, without it's a bit soft looking and with kind of hardens everything up and actually looks more like an actual drawing than like possibly a modified photograph. So let's just go ahead and we'll do this. Again, at the defaults, choose OK, and there we go. All right, let's just go full screen or fit on the screen. There's our nice blue line drawing. I'm just going to float this out and let's enlarge this. You can see it as nicely as possible here. And there we go. So there's our architectural blue line drawing made from a photograph. Again, we did the perspective fix, convert to black and white, changed that to a negative, and then blended those together, did our little minimum trick, filter minimum trick, little adjustment on the values, put the border on and our blue layer, and there you go. Okay, so that's how you can use a Photoshop Elements drawing technique or effect to create this architectural blue line drawing style. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.